chip to do something so extraordinary in this day until my eternity becomes clearer. This is the day that the Lord has given us to have the right attitude, to do the right things, and to enjoy being alive. So let's try it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. <clears throat> and STVU will rejoice. Yes. How awesome and incredible it is. Welcome to, I guess, officially day one of Ellison Jones 2022. We give God great praise and glory for uh, what happened last night. Anybody investing in hope? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm looking for my property. I'm looking. Listen, only a black preacher could find that text in the middle of nowhere. Huh? Uh, that's off the beaten path. But how amazing it was to hear Dr. Mary Young. This is going to be a full day. We have a lot going on today. And so we look forward to what God will do. We have our morning worship experience and then our, our presenter, our lecturer is coming. Um, and then we're going to have our panel. Then we'll break for lunch. And then we have virtual breakouts um, uh, with, the main, with the main stage being here. Dr. Harris will be here. And so persons will be encouraged to view all of the breakouts. You can do it via Zoom and the links will be shared. Um, and this room will be open if anybody wants to come in person. Uh, those who are students will be instructed to be here. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, Brother Ray Rousen will come later and share that and uh, um, just kind of share information. And so, again, this is an amazing day. So can we stand? I, I, I know we're still kind of working through the pandemic. And uh, I tell people I don't believe in post-pandemic. I think post-pandemic is a lie. I, I am embracing pandemic impacted because we will forever be impacted by this. But we can at least start living a little bit. Amen? So if you don't mind, can you go greet three people like they owe you some money and tell them I'm glad to see you? Our worship leaders preparing to come. Let's have an amazing day. And to God be the glory. Amen, amen, amen. I think I heard Dean say that this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, y'all not going to get happy this morning. I do believe Dean said this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, God. Almighty that sits on the throne. Why don't you get up and give God some praise this morning? Because the last miracle that he did for you was allow your behind to sit in that seat and to stand up again. So let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. I don't know about you, but we serve a mighty good God. I don't know about you, but we serve a mighty good God. I don't know about you, but I serve a mighty good God. And I say thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to bless the Lord in here today. Oh, we're going to bless the Lord in here today. We're going to set the atmosphere today because the spirit rest rules and abides in this place. We're going to ask Reverend Courtney Thompson to come 
and deliver the word of God for the people of God from our text this morning. Will you come? Come on, somebody, give God some praise this morning as we get ready to read the word of God coming from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, starting at verse 18 and reading through verse 20, Isaiah 43, 18 through 20. And the word of the Lord reads as thus, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let's go to God in prayer. God, the creator. God, the maker of heaven and earth. The God of healing. The God of protection. The God of comfort. The God of peace. The God of all gods. We say thank you. God, we say thank you for waking us up this morning. We say thank you for brand new mercies each day. We say thank you for being able to assemble in this place today. God, we say thank you for all that you have done for us, God. And as we lean into the moments of proclamation, we ask that your Holy Ghost power rain down in a mighty way, that your fire ignites this room and sets this place ablaze. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears so that we may hear the word from your preacher this day. God, hide Reverend Ralston behind the cross. God, sanctify this sacred desk, God, as he comes to proclaim and be a vessel of your word, God. We ask that you set a fresh anointing on each and every one of us here so that we may hear a word from you. And God, we may not close this prayer without asking for your forgiveness. For our sins, seen and unseen, intentional and unintentional, the quiet whispers of our hearts, God, we ask that you create in us a clean heart. God, we rebuke and bind every demonic spirit that may be roaming around this room. God, we tie it up and we put it under our feet. For only you and your spirit are welcomed in this place. God, we worship you, we honor you, and we adore you, for you shall get all the praise, the glory, and honor. And it is in Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. And let all the people of God say, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. You get a little bit better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah to the name of God. I just want to know who many people, how many people in here love the Lord. You love them just like me. Praise the name of the Lord. That's good. Yes, sir. Oh, 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 oh Lord, we love you. We love you today. Oh, Lord. 
Cantamos no song of worship. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul rejoice, take joy my King in what you One boy, sing with us. Come on. I love and I live my voice just to oh my soul rejoice. Take joy in what you hear. Our soul, we bless. 
bless you. We bless you. Oh, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. We don't want nothing to get in the way of our worship. But Lord, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Please accept our offering of worship. Let it be a sweet, sweet song. Let's go. In your ear. Come on, get. I know this is the season of worship where we exalt for everything, and I get it, but my, my prayer as, I guess, the dean and the official host of this is refreshing and revival. You know, I'm a, transparently, I'm a worshiper. I haven't survived 37 years of ministry and not be a worshiper. And I don't know how you do ministry and don't worship. Because with all that we go through, to sit there and say nothing, you ought to at least say thank you for keeping me another day. Wow. 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 Can we give God praise for our undergraduate? Some of them have to go to class now. The young man who's leading our worship this week, he is, he is a future STVU student. I think we're in good hands. Amen. Come on, everybody stand as our preacher prepares to come. I, I, um, um, Dean, Dean Kenny said to me when I first started this journey as the dean, Two things were said to me, one by Dean Kenny and one by our presenter lecturer, Dr. Sims. Dean Kenny said to me, he said, he said, John, trust what you hear God saying to you, even if it doesn't make sense to you. And then Dr. Sims, I called her one day and I said, what advice do you give a new dean? And she said, trust your instincts. And be who you were, be who you are before you got here. So Ellison Jones, for me, has to be the Holy Spirit led. Because I don't need to spend four days with folk just because it checks the box of the calendar. Hallelujah. So I want you to get so much out of these four days till you will never miss another year. Till you will be so inspired to come because you know that God's presence meets you on these sacred grounds. And so in just a moment, our preacher's coming. Uh, Pastor Cedric Rousen, who is a, a graduate of our school, uh, he pastors the Place of Change in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I'm honored. That, that, that he is here to be our preacher. And so at, at, as he gets ready to come, we're just going to sing. So I'm not a singer, but I'm a Baptist preacher, so we all think we can sing. Okay, I need about 80 of y'all that know you can't carry your tune, but if they give you the mic, you're going to mess up and sing. So we're just going to sing together. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, everybody. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because, come on, let me hear you, everybody. Everybody, everybody singing, oh, how I. Everybody singing, oh, how I, 
Come on, put that clap on it. The man of God is getting ready to come. Everybody, everybody singing, oh, how I. Everybody singing, oh, how I. Yeah, 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 oh, oh, how I. Oh, big God. Come on, one more time, come on. Everybody, everybody singing, oh. Now, if you love him back, just give him some kind of praise in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we have come today not because we love you, but because you loved us first. And so being in your presence is the response we offer heaven because we are so grateful for it is of your mercies that we are not consumed. Your compassions woke us up this morning. Goodness and mercy drove us here. And we have come to this place to say thank you. Lord, I ask in these fleeting moments that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be found acceptable in your sight. I ask that you would punish not your people for the frailty of the servant, but hide us behind the cross, that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. Somebody who loves them, shout amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am honored and humbled to be here today. I certainly give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Bishop Jesus, who the Bible says is the shepherd and bishop of our souls, to our esteemed dean. I want to thank you, sir, for this opportunity, and I am humbled, humbled always to stand in your presence, but even more to be able to stand with this awesome opportunity. Thank you. Can we celebrate Dean John Guns? Your voice is so clear in my life, and I'm grateful to you, to, to our um, esteemed and beloved forever dean, Dr. Kenny. We honor you, sir. And to all of the leadership faculty and those responsible both for this school and for this moment, I am grateful to the Lord and thankful to God, to friends, to brothers, to sisters, and those who have prayed and have loved me through this moment. There is a word from the Lord this morning, a burden from God on my heart found in Exodus 34. I sat back and I, and I thought about the fact that just a year ago I was sitting over there on the instrument and I couldn't help but reflect on how good God is. Because God doesn't have to change the room you're in to change the space you're in. And I'm honored to be in this space. Exodus 34, verses 1 through 5, the NIV says it on this wise. It says that the Lord said to Moses, chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones. And I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up on Mount Sinai early in the morning. 
as the Lord had commanded him, he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then, then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name. He was the Lord. I want to talk for just a few minutes using as a thought, worth the wait. Now, I want you to spell it right. Worth the W-E-I-G-H-T. Worth the wait. My hunch is if they were looking for preachers to preach next year at Ellison Jones, Moses would probably not be on the list. He was, in fact, not the most eloquent speaker. Moses uh, was not very confident as a preacher or speaker for God, if you will. He had a little speech impediment issue that made him so insecure that Aaron often spoke for him. He's not the one you want to travel across town to hear in revival. Yet the word of God conveyed through him helped shape the spiritual formation of an entire nation of people. So Moses then perhaps becomes for us proof that you don't have to be poetic to be prophetic. Because God cares more about your obedient pursuit than your oratorical prowess. This stammering, stuttering prophet of God, pastor to Israel and leader, helped form their faith in a way that no other one could. And perhaps amongst his greatest hits, the Decalogue, the Ten Words, is perhaps his most prized sermon. A sermon, a message, if you will, delivered using God's own sermon notes. First orally in Exodus chapter 20. And then secondly, we see in Exodus 24 and Exodus 31 that God decides, let's put it in stone. Let's, let's make it concrete. Let's go ahead and make this covenant official. And so he goes up on the mountain with God as God begins to hand him stone tablets that God has inscribed himself with his covenant for Israel. His irony, church, while Moses was at the top of the mountain, the people, when they saw he was taking too long, found themselves at the foot of the mountain erecting a golden calf likened to an Egyptian god and danced naked in idol worship, despite being free. Yes, it means in a way that they turned back into who they were. It reminds me of those words of Howard Thurman who says, often to be free means the ability to deal with the realities of one's own situation so as not to be overcome by them. But unfortunately, in Israel's case, they were overcome by them. And do you see the juxtaposition here, the irony that they are at the foot of the mountain breaking the very covenant God was putting in stone? And as that moment unlikely crescendos, Moses, the Bible says, angry, vexed in spirit and emotionally frustrated, breaks the tablet. He throws them down and he breaks the tablets. This, my brothers and sisters, is the plight of the prophet. It's the tension. It's the frustration. The temptation to mismanage prophetic uh, uh, voice and responsibility because our focus shifts from the message on the mountain to the mess at the bottom of it. And if you aren't careful, I know you're anointed. I know God called you. I know God chose you. But when the pressure gets great enough, even the strongest of us can break. And I rose today to come to Ellison Jones to minister to preachers, to leaders, to professors, to students with broken tablets. Broken passion, broken patience, broken uh, uh, consecration and broken concentration, broken vision and even broken virtue. 
when you have invested years into pedagogy and hours into weekly preparation and still don't see increase in your church, but somebody with no sermonic substance or sense can upload ignorant sound bites and praise breaks to Instagram and go viral, it will make you break. When our preaching now has to compete for primacy and for priority in the hearts and minds of people who are inundated by a pluralistic voice or voices in their heads Monday through Saturday so much that they forgot what we preached last Sunday because no matter how powerful the word was, everything else they've listened to during the week has pulled their attention and their affection in another direction. It will make you break. When faithfulness leads to frustration because you have labored so long with the Lord for it to seemingly have such short-lived effect, it will make you break. Is there anybody here today who knows about brokenness? Here's the grace. God grants Moses another chance at covenant. If I had time, I would stop by telling you that you have never preached with passion till you have preached with passion fueled by mercy. When I hear arrogance in the pulpit, it's just a sign to me that they are unaware of how much mercy it took to bring them to the moment. Because if you have ever been forgiven of anything and been granted a second chance by grace, then you won't ever stand up with your head up in the air and your nose down at somebody else because they don't do what you do like you do it. The truth of the matter is I find myself swimming somewhere in the words of Paul who says, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. What causes me not to faint is that the ministry of grace we have is only given to us through the mercies of God and if God didn't have mercy on me Saturday night I couldn't stand up here Sunday morning. God gave him a second chance. But here's the catch. Moses, here's my sermon. Last time God handed you tablets on the mountain, already inscribed. This time, you must chisel out your own stone tablets, then travel up the mountain, carrying the weight of those tablets in hand, and Ultimately, you must inscribe on them the words that I give you. And church, I could not shake. Academy, I could not shake. Ellison Jones, I could not shake the fact that here is an 80-year-old man chiseling out stone, carrying it up a mountain with no help to carry the weight. I don't have many minutes today, but the few I have, I want to preach to somebody who's been carrying some weight. Who am I talking to this morning? And so I know who I'm talking to. I want to preach to people who've been carrying the weight. And here's what I want you to see is that the call, we talk about how preaching matters, but the call isn't just about what we preach. The call is about what we carry. The pressure to provide spiritual stability and ethical accountability in a toxic and, 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 and a divided culture that has married the cross with the flag. In a government that puts a woman's body on the ballot and is backed by churches that will demonize folks for who they love but won't check themselves over who they hate. This is the weight we carry. And you may not have a knife to chisel with or a stone, but it may require the weight of hard work, of prayer, of tears, of loneliness, of grief, the ability to bounce back and be resilient when people you trust that have talked about you. It may cost you some friends. It may cost you some support. God knows it's going to cost you some money, some affirmation, some comfort, some ease, the familiar, and it's going to be vulnerable at the same time. Oh, and by the way, you can't stay at the foot 
of the mountain while you do it. God expects you with all the weight you carry to come up a little higher. I said to my wife, she's first grade school, uh, 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 school teacher. I said to her, I said, babe, you know, you have a high calling. I said, but let me tell you the pressure that, 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 that exists for us. I said, you can go to school with an attitude, and as long as you teach the facts, ultimately, the student can learn. I said, but we have the challenge of being called in an environment where God judges the heart as much as the content. So what it means is God won't give us the benefit of bringing our attitude to the platform. God says, no, first, you can't preach on forgiveness, and you know you still got an art with somebody on row six. I need you to get that together. You can't come in here and tell people to tithe, and you don't give. You can't tell folks to be faithful, and you everywhere. It's the challenge of God wanting and requiring of us that we do the work to chisel out character. Because competence with no character is like perishable items with no fridge. It may taste good at first, but leave it out and it'll go sour. Somebody shout, it's been heavy. From last year to this year, it's been heavy. Preaching to screens. Preaching on Zoom. Having to teach class. Have you considered the weight of the faculty in this season? Because one of the things that I remember about this place is, is that we prided ourselves on hollow grounds and dear old walls and the idea of being in sacred shared space together. There was a different factor that you couldn't explain when you stepped into Kingsley or you stepped over in, 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 into any classroom. There was something that you can't duplicate on Zoom. And those who graduate now talk about the experience they had. And I almost want to tell them, yeah, but that's kind of like uh, STVU 2.0. Because STVU, we remember, would send us up in praise breaks in some classes. And we'd end up crying over the hymns in the middle of the class. And there was a certain atmosphere you get when you come to chapel. Things you can't recreate now. Now we're having to chisel out. Somebody's in a season of ministry and you're doing your best to be creative and innovative. But it's difficult because you're 80, you're 70, you're 60, you're tired. And God requires that you do the work. My dean said to me years ago, he said, uh, there are a lot of preachers with oil on them. He said, the problem is they don't have any blood on them. He said, the oil will get you recognized, but, but if you don't kill something, if you don't show you've got sacrifice on you. See, that's the kind of weight I'm talking about. It's one thing for somebody to preach that the Lord will heal you and make a way, but they've never been sick or broke. But when you've had to come through cancer and you say God is a healer, it creates a different level of weight to what you say. Same words, but a different level of weight. And all I'm trying to get you to see today is that God may have you at the foot of the mountain chiseling out stones, not because God wants to change your words, but because God wants to change your weight so that when you stand up to declare what God has said, it comes out stronger and greater and more powerful because I know that the class can get you you a grade but only the anointing can destroy the yoke I know I'm not allowed to say that here I said only the anointing can destroy the yoke there's something about when you endure the weight at the foot of the mountain and God's word for you today is that I know it's hard and I know it costs and I know it's difficult but it's worth
I know this is going to be a faith statement, but I dare you to look at somebody and tell them it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. I know it'd be hard for you to see right now, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. I know you got turned down for that church, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. I know you still haven't preached a faithful few, but it's worth it. I know you got some problems and some board meetings and some issues. I know you got a lot of papers to do. I know you got some papers to grade. I know you're ready to retire, but now the church is not in a position for you to do so. I know things don't look too great right now, but I promise you it is worth it. I leave you alone so we can go to class. I have, I have one question that I answer one point. I don't have three points. COVID took two of my points. Got one question, one attempt at an answer. Here's the question How do we find worth in the weight we carry? And here's my attempt at an answer, and I leave you alone. The weight we carry isn't our punishment, it's our purpose. Okay, come and say that one more time. I said the weight we carry, hallelujah to God, isn't our punishment. It's our purpose. Moses, God doesn't have you at the foot of the mountain to punish you. God is not so cruel that God wants you to sweat at 80 as punishment for breaking the tablets. God wants you instead, sir, ma'am, to see this is how heavy ministry is. And maybe the reason you broke the tablets last time is because I did all the work. So this time, I'm not going to give you a ready-made, pre-made, just walk into the blessing kind of miracle. This time, I'm going to let you in on the back side of ministry and show you what it feels like to have to chisel out the stone. I feel the Holy Ghost. To have to write in the stone. To have to carry the stone. And no, I'm not going to let you take an armor bearer up on that mountain to carry your stone for you. I'm going to make you carry your own stone up the mountain. Because I want you to see this is ministry. And maybe when you realize this is ministry, you won't break so easily. God said, I called you to walk in the weighty. In other words... It's not supposed to be easy. You're not supposed to be able to just wake up and speak for God. It's not supposed to be easy. You're not supposed to be able to just roll over and claim God spoke to you. You're supposed to have seasons where you pray and feel like you can't hear a voice and you're sitting in the dark and you're having to go off the last thing God said because you're waiting on new direction and God is reminding you that my word shall not come back void. So if I told you that last time, hold on to what I gave you till I give you something else. It's supposed to be hard. And by the way, Moses, I'm not going to lighten the load for you to carry it. And here's why. Because if you were strong enough to break stone, you're strong enough to carry it. Okay, your neighbor just missed that revelation and I'm running out of time. I said if you were strong enough to break the tablets, then you're strong enough to carry it. Which means God doesn't need to give you more strength. You need to focus the strength you have. Maybe God sent you to Ellison Jones this week not to strengthen you, but to help focus you so that you take that strength you've been using to tear stuff down and beat stuff up and get upset and instead use that strength to carry your tablets that contain God's word up the mountain and allow God to work on your spirit. Your problem is in weakness is weariness. You lost focus. So this time, I made it heavy on purpose. So you're less likely to let emotion make you break up. 
I'm done. I'll close two ways. Here's the first one. Reverend Dr. Bishop Tony Morrison says it like this. She says, this is your assignment. Feel all the things. Feel the hard things. The inexplicable things. The things that make you disavow humanity's capacity for redemption. Feel all of the maddening paradoxes. Feel overwhelmed. Feel angry. Feel uncertain. Feel afraid. Feel powerless. Feel frozen. And then focus. Okay, I, I, I knew that wasn't going to be enough for VUU. So, so, so let me try it like this. I know another liberator. Who uh, was also headed up a mountain. Only this time he was headed, the Bible said at night, to the Mount of Olives. But God stopped him at the foot of the mountain, just like God stopped Moses. The foot of this mountain was called the Garden of Gethsemane. And it is in this same place that we find this liberator wrestling with God. And here's what I want you to see. He prayed for a whole hour that the Lord would shift his emotionality. He said, my soul is distressed unto death. And Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And it's as if God is saying, no, I'm not going to make this any easier for you. Because you already have the strength you need to carry what you've got to carry up that hill. And so he says, nevertheless, not my will, y'all know the Bible, but thy will be done. And as a result, what I want you to see is Jesus came to the garden in agony. But he did not leave the garden in joy. He came to the garden distressed, but he left still in distress. Well, then what was the victory? He focused. Not my will, but thy will be done. And instead of going up the Mount of Olives, he went up a hill called Calvary and Jesus while distressed with the burdens on his back was beaten 40 times was spit upon his clothes were gambled for and the people mocked him but with as much distress as he felt he still carried oh not stones because he was the stone that the builders had rejected but he carried himself up on Calvary's hill and the old Baptist preacher said he died he died till death died. He died until the centurion said, surely he is the son of God. He died. And why did he die? Because he knew it was worth the weight. That all of the weight he carried on the cross would make sense on that third day morning when he got up with all power in his hands and if Jesus could endure his weight then he sent me here to tell you heavy and all to keep on going I know the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb but you started out a long time ago and there is no doubt in our mind that I decided to to make Jesus my choice I'm out of time but can you help me give God glory for those of you who've been heavy now I'm not going to tell you that the Lord's going to lift the load but what I will tell you is that you can do it heavy you can build it heavy you can do it weight it the power of God will meet you where you are and just like God sent his glory on that mountain I believe that before Ellison Jones is over there's a cloud of glory that's getting ready to fall for everybody who's been heavy I came to declare that he that began a good work in me shall finish what he started 
Devil, you got something coming. Uh, if you think uh, I'm going to break these tablets again, it might get crazy, but I won't break up. It might get rough, but I won't break up. I might cry some tears, but I won't break up. I might worry myself to death, but I still won't break up. Tell me who can stand be for us when we call on that great name. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? So can we praise God like it's worth the wait? Can we praise him like it's worth the wait? Can you praise him like all of your pressure has a purpose? Can you praise him like your tears are your transition? Can you praise him like those tablets are going to take you into your future? How you going to do it, Rem Rousey? With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the old Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. For somebody whose head is down, God told me to tell you, lift up your head. O oh, ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King, and the King, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. I dare you to praise him like it's worth though the storms keep on raging in my life and it's hard to tell the night from day still this blessed hope it's real sure what is it that if the storms don't cease and if the wind keep on blowing my soul I, I leaned over to Dr. Sims because we're, we're both in the same world right now. And I said, God ain't going to take the weight. But we're able to carry it. Dr. West turned to me and said, we ain't being punished. It's, it's just purpose. I was, my wife and I, my wife is here. She's a, she's a student here. And she's my free counselor and my unpaid therapist. And we were driving here and I was saying, I was just lamenting about some things. Dr. Smith, trying to do this the best I can. Be a pastor, and be your dean. And, you know, whether people want to believe it or not, follow in footsteps of size 12 when you got a size 6. Being comfortable in your own skin. 
when there's a template for how this looks and I don't fit it because I'm a worshiper I'm, I'm, and my wife just listen and then she just kind of quietly said God got you and then I come to church and God said I ain't, I'm going to make you chisel this one It's, it's bad habit to talk after the preacher, but is there anybody that's grateful that God didn't, that God gave you a second chance to try it again? Come on, everybody stand. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask um, Dr. Goolchamp if she will pray and then we're going to take a break, about 10 minutes. So I present her, who's an amazing woman. And really, she doesn't know she's a mentor to me. Very quietly, I've been listening to her journey. But I, I want Dr. Go, Jim, you don't have to come up here. I don't want her to pray over this house. She, she's the queen mother. Oh, she's the queen mother. And I want her to pray for all of us that's dealing with weight. And, and like I told you, my desire for this meeting is that you are refreshed, revived, so you can reimagine. But more importantly, so you get everything God wants you to have. So she's going to pray. And then when she's done, we're going to break about 10 minutes so let's say 10 15 we'll come back together um thank you cedric rouse yeah. now please don't leave finish the day amen, amen. don't come here and not get everything all right, Queen Mother, would you pray for us? God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you because you already knew that we needed this word. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that even as we come, that you have come before us that you've prepared the preacher, that not only have you prepared the preacher, but you have prepared us. And so even God, as we just allow this word to move and to have dominion in our spirits, even right now, as we wrestle, but also as we are comforted by this word, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. God, you know why our thanks are coming to you, each one of us. You know the things that we have brought to this place this day. But God, you already had a word for us. And so, oh God, the purpose that you have placed in us, the reason that we were created to stand and to be your women and your men to stand before people that are broken, even in our own brokenness. We thank you for reminding us that we don't have to do it in our own strength, that you have already provided everything that we stand in need of. On this day, your fresh word May it continue to move and to comfort and to sustain and to encourage and to prepare us to go back and to continue the chiseling that you have called us to do. Oh God, we thank you for our school, the chiseling that you're doing. We thank you for our dean, the chiseling that you're doing in us as faculty. But God, we thank you, God, for our own lives. 
the chiseling that you're doing in our health and in our careers and on our jobs and in our homes and in our families, in our communities, God. Oh, God, we thank you that you're not finished with us. And so, God, just continue to bless us. Your spirit is so sweet. Your spirit is so sweet. Your spirit, oh God, is so sweet. And we receive, God, what you're doing right now. Our heart is made glad and our spirit is being renewed. We thank you, God, for doing what only you can do. And now, God, just continue to bless us the rest of the day. God, you, you started out early. You've been blessing us from the moment we walked into this sanctuary. And we know you're not finished. So continue to do your perfect will and your perfect work in us that we might focus, focus, focus. And God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise in the name of Jesus. And all the people of God said, Amen.